I'm going to give you a quick rundown of Apple ProRes video codec. We'll go over what ProRes is, what it's used for, what are the differences between each ProRes option, and how it's different from other popular codecs like H.264. I'm going to break this video into two chapters. First, we'll do a quick TLDR-style overview to help you understand ProRes and what it's for. So if you just want a quick explanation, check out the TLDR and hit the like button on your way out. And all my fellow video nerds who want to learn more, we'll dive into the nitty-gritty details after that. It gets a little technical, but I think this stuff is super interesting. So if you're into that kind of stuff, grab a beverage and stick around until the end. Every video codec can be characterized based on how well it behaves in three critical dimensions. Compression, quality, and complexity. Compression means data reduction. In other words, how many bits of data are needed compared to the original image. For video files, this is your bitrate. Quality describes how well the compressed video resembles the original file. Complexity does not get mentioned a lot, but it's a crucial part of the process and it relates to how complex and taxing it is for your computer to compress or decompress and playback the video file. Every video codec design has to make trade-offs between these three properties. Any iPhone, GoPro, or other consumer camera, for example, will give you videos that are using either H.264 or H.265, also known as HEVC codec. These codecs give you great image quality at low data rates, so they prioritize compression and quality. The trade-off is complexity, which means that editing these videos is pretty taxing on your computer. I want to say you're probably fine editing smaller projects using these codecs, and modern computers are pretty well optimized for complex codecs like this, but in professional settings where resolutions and frame rates are high, and you might be working with multiple streams of 4K video, low complexity becomes much more important. That's where Apple ProRes steps in. It offers great image quality at very low complexity making it an efficient codec for video editing. The trade-off is compression, meaning that these files will be significantly larger compared to standard MP4 files. But like I said, every codec makes a trade-off between the three, and in professional settings, having small file sizes isn't as important as maintaining maximum image quality and keeping the complexity low. Here I have two copies of the same file. Same resolution, same length, but one is ProRes, and the other one is an MP4 file using H.264. The first thing you'll notice is that ProRes files can be pretty large, but ProRes actually strikes a good balance for file size and image quality, making it a good choice for video editing. Here are some main reasons why ProRes is popular. It's a high-quality codec that's editing-friendly. What that means is that even though your MP4 files are smaller and might still have great image quality, they're using highly efficient compression, which is more taxing on your CPU when you're editing and playing back the files. ProRes, on the other hand, is optimized for efficient playback and real-time editing, so it allows you to have a smooth editing experience without needing to transcode your files to another format. This is why MP4 is often used as the delivery format for finished videos, but during the editing process, ProRes is easier to work with. And of course, on certain platforms like TV commercials, ProRes is common as a delivery format as well. There are different types of ProRes to choose from, each offering different levels of quality and compression. The proxy version has the lowest quality, and it's designed for offline editing or proxy workflows where performance is prioritized over image quality. The LT version has a lower bitrate than standard ProRes 422, but it's still suitable for most post-production workflows where reduced file size is beneficial. The standard ProRes variant provides a good balance between quality and file size, and it's commonly used for general video editing. It has a bit rate that's approximately 44% smaller compared to the HQ version, providing you better multi-stream real-time editing performance. The HQ version has the highest bit rate of the 422 options. It supports full-width 422 video sources at 10-bit pixel depths while remaining visually lossless through many generations of decoding and re-encoding. So if your workflow involves exporting the same files multiple times, using the HQ version is a good idea. Being visually lossless is also a big deal. All ProRes versions are lossy codecs, meaning these formats are mathematically speaking lossy, but the HQ version is visually lossless. In other words, 
it is visually indistinguishable from the original file when viewed alongside the original on identical displays. Also, let's talk about the difference between 422 and the 4444 options. 422 has a 422 chroma subsampling. This means that for every four pixels of brightness information, also known as luminance, there are two pixels of color information. This reduces the amount of color data, which helps keep file sizes smaller while still maintaining good image quality. ProRes 4, so to speak, on the other hand, maintains four pixels of color information for every four pixels of brightness information. In other words, it maintains full color resolution without any reduction in color data. This provides the highest color fidelity and is important for tasks that require precise color grading, compositing, and visual effects. But before you go and change your whole workflow, the source material really matters. iPhones, for example, record video in 420 chroma subsampling, which is common for most consumer devices. This means that for every four pixels of brightness information, there is only one pixel of color information, effectively reducing the color resolution. So as far as color accuracy go, converting your iPhone videos to ProRes 4 does not offer you any benefits. Besides color accuracy, there are other benefits you get with ProRes 4. It supports alpha channels, so it's ideal for motion graphics or for anything that requires transparent backgrounds. The XQ version has a very high data rate to preserve the detail in high dynamic range imagery generated by today's highest quality digital image sensors. This is your choice for maintaining extreme color detail and dynamic range, and it's ideal for HDR content. And here's a chart to visualize the difference between bitrate between all the different ProRes versions. The higher versions offer significantly higher quality, but as you see here, your file size will balloon up pretty quickly each time you step up to a higher version of ProRes, so choose carefully. You've probably seen how formats like H.264 allow you to manually pick your bitrate. ProRes, on the other hand, automatically adjusts the bitrate based on the resolution of your video, so you don't need to worry about setting the bitrate yourself. The bitrate scales linearly with the number of pixels in the frame, so the higher the resolution, the higher your bitrate will be. For example, a 4K video file has four times more pixels than the same video at 1080p resolution so your bitrate and consequently the file size will be four times larger than the 1080p version. Frame rate also plays a big role with your data rate and file size. If your frame rate doubles from 30 frames per second to 60 frames per second, ProRes will double the bitrate and therefore double your file size. It sounds like a lot, but that's what it takes to maintain the quality that each frame of your video requires. Even though ProRes automatically sets the bitrate for you based on the video you're working with, it does not use a constant bitrate. It's actually using a variable bitrate, meaning that the number of bits used to encode each frame varies from one frame to the next. That's why all the data rates I'm showing here are the target data rates. The variability is usually pretty small though, so the actual data rate always ends up being very close to the target rate. The reason variable bitrate is smart is because it looks at your image and only uses as much data as is needed. For example, if you have an intro screen like the one on the left, you don't need a lot of data to produce a clean, sharp image. There's only two colors and not a lot of detail. The image on the right, on the other hand, has lots of different colors and fine detail, so to encode that with high quality, you're going to need to use more data. Variable bitrate looks at your image and adjusts the data rate on the fly, maximizing image quality while trying to keep the file sizes as small as possible. One thing we didn't talk about yet is ProRes RAW. This is a capture format that some high-end cameras and capture devices offer. It captures raw sensor data from your camera with minimal processing, giving you maximum flexibility on post-production. It's a great codec for color grading and HDR workflows. It basically offers you the smooth performance of ProRes codecs with the benefits of working with raw video. The file sizes are going to be higher compared to standard ProRes files, but if you compare them to true RAW formats, they're smaller while still maintaining very high quality. So just to recap, ProRes is an excellent codec when high image quality and fast performance are a top priority. It offers you multiple profiles to choose from, and it's widely supported by different video editing applications. 
One thing to note is that because ProRes is created by Apple, Windows computers don't have native built-in support for these video files. You can read and write ProRes when using third-party applications like Adobe Premiere on Windows, but without third-party applications, you might not be able to view these files on a Windows computer. A popular, similar high-quality video codec for Windows environments would be DNxHD. So there you have it. If you made it all the way here, thanks for watching and listening to all the nitty-gritty technical details. I find this stuff fascinating, and I hope this video helped you understand the ProRes format a little bit better. Thanks again, and I hope to see you all in the next video. That subscribe button needs a hug, by the way, so why don't you give it one on your way out?